Welcome everyone! Today we'll learn how to use the Azure Emulator to develop Azure storage solutions locally with .NET. So as a prerequisite, we need to install the tool. Visual Studio 2022 automatically installs this emulator, but you can also install Azure by using VS Code, NPM, Docker Hub, or GitHub. I'll provide the documentation link in the description below. So you need to go to the location of the Azure emulator. This is the path, so it can change depending on the Visual Studio version. I have the community one, but it could be professional or enterprise. So in this path, we'll execute this Azure executable file as administrator. So it will execute the Azure Blob, Azure Queue and Azure Table services in a different port, but in the same local address. Now go to the navigator and we'll download a sample code for this demo. Let's pull the initial branch. So let me clone the repository, open any terminal and type git clone, open the solution. This is a console application. So this console application includes three classes for each service. The first one is the plot service, which includes an execute method. We'll add some logic in this method. The second one is the queue service and the final one is the table service. As you see, the three classes implements the iStorage service, which includes the execute method, which will include some logic in each Azure storage service. Each storage service has its own connection string, so I already added. And finally, in the program.cs file, we'll create a new list of iStorage service to execute the method in parallel by using the task that when all method will execute all the stretch task okay so let's start with the blob service for this azure storage service will upload an image based on an url so for that let's create a new blob container client create a new variable called client and create a new blob container client we need to pass the connection stream and the blob container name, which in this case will be images. But using the azure.storage.blobs.nuget package, now with the client, we'll create a blob to upload an image based on an URL. So let's download the string of an image by using the HTTP client class. So create a new variable called a string and create a new HTTP client object and use the get string async method to get the string asynchronously. So let me add the await and async keywords. So let's pass the URL for an image. So go to the navigator and in the second link, I have this image. So let me copy the image link. And then with the string, we'll create a new blob to store the image. So we'll use the client and get blob client will define the name of the blob, which in this case will be Azure Blob Storage PNG. And we just simply call blob that blob asynchronously the stream, which corresponds to the image. We can remove this line and then we'll print by a console that the image with the blob name was uploaded successfully. This is the first Azure Storage service to upload an image in the Azure Blob service. Now go to the second Azure Storage service, which will be the queue service. In this service, we'll send two messages to a queue and then pick them. So create a new client by calling new queue service, new queue client, sorry. This class comes from azure.storage.queues.nuget package. So in this client, we'll pass the connection string and the queue name. We'll create all the resources later in the Azure Storage service. So now with the client, we just simply call client .send message asynchronously. We'll send two simple messages, two simple strings. So the first one will be message number one and send a second message. And then we'll pick the messages so create a new variable called picked messages and call client. Let's add the await keyword and call 
pick messages asynchronously. We'll define the mass messages, which in this case will be two messages to pick. And then we'll get the value from the response and transform each value. Or we'll get the stream, which corresponds to the body. And we'll transform these bodies to stream to get the stream messages. Okay. So now let's add a for each statement to iterate over the messages. And then by a console, we'll print each message. Okay. Message pick from the queue. And let's remove this line. And that's it. We'll create a new queue. We'll send two messages and we'll pick them and print by a console the messages from the queue. And finally, let's add some logic to the table service. In this case, we'll add two entities to a product table. So create a new client, which will be of table client object. By using the Azure that data that tables in get package will pass the connection string and the table name, which in this case will be product. Then we'll create a new list of type uh, table entity to add two entities to the product table. So create a new list and then create a new table entity. To create an entity, we need to define the partition key and the row key. So the partition key for the entities will be the category. In this case, will be clothing. And the row key will be the identifier. And then we'll set the properties for the entity. So the first one will be the name. Okay. Let me copy this property. Let's add two more properties for the price. Let's define any decimal value. And finally, let's add a quantity property for the product entity. Similarly, add a second product with the same partition key, a different row key. Change the properties and define a different quantity. And that's it. Now add each entity to the product table so call entities and add a for each statement so here we'll asynchronously add each entity so call client that add entity synchronously and then we'll print via console that the product name was added into the product table so access the name property from the entity added to the product table and that's it we're adding two entities into a product table now it's time to test the application but before that we need to create the resources in this case the product table create the queue and for the blob we need to create the blob container so in order to visualize the resources we'll use a tool called Azure Storage Explorer. So in the Azure Storage Explorer, go to emulate and attach, storage accounts, go to the emulator, and you will see the blob containers, queues and tables. So create a new blob container called images, create a new queue called Q1, and finally create a new product table. Now we have the required resources to run the console application. So in the program.cs file, we'll create a list of stretch services for blob, queue, and table, and then run the stretch task based on the execute method in parallel by using the equinol method. So it's time to run the console application. We have an error. Okay, need to add a parenthesis. Execute the console application. So the messages are picked from the queue. The products are added into the product table, and the image was uploaded successfully as the output console shows. So go to the Explorer, refresh all, open again the emulator, and you will see in the images blob container, refresh, and we have the image uploaded successfully. Open the queues, we have the new queue with two messages. So far, so good. And finally, in the Azure table stretch, we have the product table refresh. And we have the two entities with the partition key, row key, and the properties defined. So in this demo, we plan how to use the Azure emulator to develop Azure storage solutions locally with .NET.